What's up guys, today we released a video called Gamers React, and you might not notice this, but it's actually a very special video because it's our first virtual production. Let me explain. Welcome to my chambers. We got this quarantine situation going on. We can't gather, but I can still write pieces. What can we do in that situation? What kind of piece can we make where people can't gather? Well, let's do a parody of our visual effects artist react series, except it's video game characters talking about, I guess, what they've learned from their experiences. I figured, you know what? Why not learn Unreal? They put a lot of energy into making it specialized for virtual production. Sam, why are you making a video with Unreal Engine? Why not just use Cinema 40 and Octane because it's way higher quality? First off, thank you for asking that question. There's a huge difference between making a 3D animated helicopter. There is a difference between a 3D animation and a virtual production. And if we wanted to make a 3D animated video, we would take a very different path. The whole point of a virtual production is to lift as many practices and techniques from a traditional real life film set as possible and then apply that to your virtual world. You say you wanna make a virtual production, kid. Well, I got the tools for you. Check it out. First, we start with Unreal Engine. It's free. Wow, holy cow. Done. Install that on your PC. Next up, you want an iPhone. Sorry, Android users. The iPhone is way better for this kind of stuff. First off, what do we got here? Oh man, whoa. Is this a facial tracking application? Yeah. Woo, 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 woo. This is from Epic Games. Unreal made this. This is their official facial capture application. And it works really, really well. It lets me record all my facial expressions and translate that to a digital character. Don't judge this app by my results because you still have to be good at making a really good facial rig for this to even function with, but this app is dope. This is top secret beta software, but I think by the time this video gets released, this will be public. You're also gonna want your iPhone because if you wanna control your camera, Unreal and Epic Games has already made a virtual camera app. Are you psycho? Yes, I'm psycho. I'm psycho excited for this project. Check this out. I've got a virtual camera. It's tracking all my movements with my camera. You see that? Look at that. This is nuts. So now I get an angle down here where I can get an angle up here. Do you see how crazy this is? Cool, well that's checking two things off the list. I can take my sweet real life acting skills and apply them, I can take my sweet real life camera skills and apply them. What's the last step you may ask, Sam? Well, a $20,000 motion capture suit. <laughs> Asterix, a $20,000 motion capture suit. I love the X10 suit, it's been working really well. These might look like actual pajamas, but trust me, you do not want to sleep in this. Basically, this allows me to translate my physical body movements into the game engine and capture a performance. With all these tools though, I don't have to hand animate a single thing. It's not a virtual production if you're sitting there like tweaking all this stuff all day. It's like, no, I, a, what does a production entail? A director, a cameraman, some actors, and then an environment. When I'm done wiggling my body around and moving the camera around, I hit cut and it's there. The data is captured and I get to use it. What about the environment? In doing a React video in our style, well, that takes place on a couch in our studio. So thankfully, recreating that was super, super easy. I needed a nice couch 3D model, but then I also needed a 3D model of our entire studio. And thankfully, the guys from Leica came by our studio last year and we got a pretty robust, full-on 3D scan for our entire space that all I had to do was optimize a little bit for real time and then drop it right in. It's a little low poly, but it's okay because we're never gonna like fully see the studio in focus. It fits, you know, it feels like we're in the studio now. That's it, that's the whole environment. Sam Gorski, right? One of my best friends, okay? A man of high intellect, creative passion. I really love what he's doing with this whole process that he's getting into. He's doing all this to circumvent some of the problems you face as a filmmaker. I think the thing that he didn't realize is that all these problems that he's experiencing could be solved with today's sponsor, Squarespace. Problem number one, filming locations and environments that aren't always possible when you have limited budgets or limited access to locations. Using Squarespace's beautiful award-winning templates, you can pretty much build any type of website that you want. So problem number one, huge problem, voila, that's pretty much solved. Problem number two, when you're working with a small crew, dealing with actors can often be difficult when um, you know, you're know you also trying to focus on the creative process. But thanks to Squarespace's multiple contributors tool, he can allow different people from his crew, different levels of access, 
access to his site. Problem solved. Problem number three. Sam is still very much dealing with the COVID pandemic like everyone else in LA. Well, that doesn't allow him to go out with a whole ton of people filming a bunch of stuff like you normally would do. Thanks to Squarespace, they've done it again through their simultaneous posting tool. Sam can make one post on his website and that will automatically format and go out to his other social media profiles like Twitter and Facebook. Problem number four. Dealing with all of the equipment that you have to deal with on set as a traditional filmmaker can often be uh, a nuisance or uh, just, just downright painstaking. Squarespace's traffic overview tools are not painful or a nuisance at all. And lastly, everything Sam creates on his site has one-click portability off of Squarespace. You own everything you post on there. And of course, they have 24-7 award-winning customer service if he ever has a problem. I hate to solve all the problems around here, but somebody's got to do it. And if you guys are interested in solving your problems in your life, consider going to squarespace.com slash corridor crew and you'll get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Isn't that great? 10% off. <sighs> it's a beautiful thing. Green Lantern, is his, his limits are only his knowledge of military history. <laughs> and that is his only limit. I was like, oh, this AA gun from 1942. <laughs> so part of the fun of the Visual Effects Artist series is we all gather and we kind of riff on these clips that we're watching. It's not scripted, it's totally improvised. We're all just there, you know, explaining what we're seeing. So we wanted to make sure this video had a very similar feel to that. We would hop on Discord and we would basically just riff on it for like an hour or so. I would take all that improvisation and then I would basically make a script. That was the foundation for this entire piece. Once we have our audio, we edit it. It kind of sounds like a podcast basically, but I use that as the blueprint for everything I'm about to do. You can basically make a timeline in Unreal that you're going to animate all your stuff to and you can drag in your audio tracks and see the waveforms right here. It's pretty nuts. So now that I've got my audio files, we need our bodies to move, we need our faces to move, and then once everyone's moving, we film it. So I put on the motion capture suit and then I basically Power Rangers it. His name is Sam. And, and I do this. I'm just literally doing that to, while I'm listening. I'm syncing the stuff for each character for the entire piece. We're just using Nico and Clint's voices. So from there, we open up our facial capture application. Oh wow, look at me go. It looks good with certain expressions, some break it. That's my fault here. But now I gotta do this for every take for every character. Sam, tell us a little bit about what you do. My lip sync is really good. Why? Well, it's because I've listened to the scene like a hundred times by now. It's really hard to just drop yourself into the scene and like understand the rhythm of all the dialogue. Now I've recorded a face. I can basically take that file and I drop that onto my character here. Now we have a character talking. Once I do the body capture and then I do the facial capture, what I'm left with is basically the equivalent of the rehearsal, so to speak. Everyone knows their places, everyone knows their lines. We still need to whip out the camera and film the dang thing. This is my favorite part. I've taken off the motion capture suit. I'm not lip syncing anymore. I don't have any more work to do. My camera work is being transferred into the sequence. How would you film this scene? Well, probably a nice punched in angle like this. Uh, we would probably zoom out a little bit, get maybe like a wider shot that has all three of us on the couch. Since I'm not keyframing stuff, this is all captured. I feel like there's this really natural organic element that you get to see here. Like having this really fluid handheld camera in a virtual environment, I think it's pretty trippy to watch. And what we're left with is a piece of footage. It's like we're offloading footage from a camera at that point. All we need to do from there is take it and edit through our different camera angles and get our cuts going. So the end product here, it's not necessarily the most 100% realistic thing, but it wasn't designed to be. We knew it wasn't going to be 100% photo real. We knew the end animation was going to be a little bit janky, but the thing is, is that all these things are kind of in place now for us to improve on it and hopefully make it look a lot more realistic because there are some pretty crazy things coming out for Unreal. I, I want to take a moment to personally thank the guys at Unreal because I was able to get in touch with them. Some of them helped me step by step get a lot of this stuff built out and answering my questions. These guys are very passionate about getting stuff like this working, helping creators find and create workflows. They see the promise in this, which is we have an opportunity here to create a new style of content. People can create things that would have been completely impossible if they had to do it on a real set. We're working towards this world where your creativity and your filmmaking skills are the only things that are gonna hold you back. It's not your budget, it's not what actors you can get, it's not the kind of environments and locations you can afford. It's just simply, what's the story you're trying to tell and how creative can you get with it? And that's pretty cool.
If you guys are tired of listening to me talk about how I made this video and just wanted to see it, head on over to the Cordo channel right now where it is live. And want to see more using these techniques? Let us know because I would be more than happy to pump out the craziest videos for you guys, maybe every two weeks again. Hey, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Corridor Digital. And if you are really into virtual production and wanna see what I'm up to, cause I'm posting junk all the time, head over to at Mechaforce on Instagram where I'm pretty frequently posting pretty cool tidbits of projects like this we're working on. Also, if you don't wanna miss cool videos like this and you don't wanna be left in the past using real life cameras, don't forget to subscribe. 